Duncan and the Wisp is a top-down adventure game with point-and-click mechanics for movement and combat. The player primarily clicks the ground to move the character Duncan to a location and also combat enemies by moving the mouse pointer over an enemy to highlight them and then clicking to commence the attack. Abilities such as dashing and healing have been incorporated to mitigate damage and to give the player a faster means of traversal to get in and out of areas. We also wanted to give the player something to work for and earn that would increase the power and abilities of the player. To do this we gave the player elemental gems through a series of unlocks that the player could add to their arsenal of attacks. This would allow them to use the right mouse button to fire unique projectiles depending on the elemental gem they have selected. We also created a summoning system that ties directly into the elemental system. The summoning system allows the player to call upon the power of the elements that the player has selected at that time. This power will cause heavy damage to any of the enemies in the surrounding area, but depending on the element that's selected at the moment, it will also cause a specific effect that will help turn the tide of battle for the player. The game had come a long way since its earlier prototype. While the dashing and point and click mechanics remained constant throughout development, we also tried incorporating a shield and kicking mechanic. The shield would essentially deflect lasers to solve puzzles and the kick mechanic would just push objects around. One mechanic we had intended on being our core mechanic was a reality face mechanic. Using this ability, the player was able to reveal different areas and enemies while navigating through the alternate reality. After multiple iterations of this mechanic throughout our capstone, the game began to take shape on its own, and it felt like we were actually forcing this mechanic to be in the game. After a while, we realized it just wasn't working and it didn't feel cohesive with the overall aesthetic of the game that we were creating. The reality phase mechanic is not the only mechanic that we ended up having to cut from the game. One of the main mechanics we actually cut was our pet system. It was actually the predecessor to what we have now, which is a summoning system. The pet system, like most MMOs, would allow you to summon a pet and then put them in aggressive assist mode or defend mode, and so on. And then the pet would actually go around and help you fight. Unfortunately, just like the reality phase mechanic, the pet system just didn't feel like it belonged in the overall picture of the final product. However, we still felt like we needed a companion system of some sort within the game, so we took what we learned making the pet system and turned that into our summoning system. Having made that change, we are actually able to make the game a little bit more engaging and fun and have the player a little bit more on their toes instead of being able to sit back and have the pet do all the work for them. This was our first time as a team developing and working on something at this scale, so I'm still a little unsure if we had a real process at all, but what I can say that did work well for us was simply being honest with ourselves and our abilities to get certain tasks done, and trusting each other to get them done. So being a student working on a project remotely requires a lot of communication, but how you communicate is just as important. I believe our team had a great approach of respect and candor towards one another's ideas and work. I personally played devil's advocate a lot just to try and keep things in scope. Sometimes you have to be that guy, but as long as your team shares the same goal and vision to have a complete project in just four months, it permits you to have that focus to say things like, no, this isn't working, why not this instead, and for others to be like, what, no, that sucks, what if we tried this, and so on. So constantly being honest and in your, in your communication is key. Getting to the capstone project was a hard and long road for everyone on the team, so we knew going in that we wanted to give it our all and create something that we all could be proud of. Because of this passion, we decided right away to create something that not only would be a great portfolio piece, but something that would separate us from all the other teams pretty significantly. Many things were added to our project, and as they were tested, we weighed them against the rest of the project. If they did not feel right, we simply cut them and moved on. Ultimately, I feel our project's success is not only because of the entire team's dedication and late night bug fixing, but because of our willingness to try reaching for what seems to be impossible tasks to conquer. We refuse to believe that four months was not enough time to create a stunning, beautiful, fun work of art to show off to the world. I don't think any one of us had a clear, concrete vision or idea of what we wanted our game to be. And I think that is what led to most of our success. Sometimes if you formulate this grand vision, or if you have you and your team try to make your ideal dream game, you set yourself up for a lot of hardships. You lose that opportunity to just experiment and try things out to see if they work. If your idea didn't work, go oh well, let's move on to another, and then another, and another, and before you know it, you have a game that's starting to take shape and breathe on its own. 
I believe that's what happened within our development process because when we all started to see what our game could be, we started to design toward that game while still repeating our same process of coming up with a concept, testing it out, seeing if it works, and continuing to iterate upon if, if it does. All in all, we hope everyone enjoys the game as much as we have enjoyed making it. We will have a booth set up at FPS on May 9th and encourage everyone to come out and take a few minutes to play the game and ask any questions you may have on the project. See you then.